we are going to talk about uh, lecture number 36 where we will be discussing two very important and interesting topics one is laser plasma accelerators and the other one is accelerator driven systems which is also called accelerator driven subcritical reactor systems now first one I am going to discuss about uh, laser plasma accelerators. Now we have so far discussed different kind of accelerators. For example DC accelerators where maximum gradient of 1 to 2 million volts per meter is achieved or used. Then the improved version of different one is the RF accelerators. This could be either room temperature or superconducting type. Now in the case of room temperature RF accelerators, gradients used are of the order of 10 million volts per meter. And in the case of superconducting RF accelerators, Gradients in the range of 50 to 100 million volts per meter are usable. Now these gradients are not enough if you want to go to very high energy and therefore new technology has to be developed and one of the such technology is a laser plasma accelerator technology where accelerating gradients of 100 to 300 GB per meter are achievable. In fact, uh, in experiments, 100 gigavolts per meter has been measured and has been achieved. Now, what is this laser plasma accelerator? Just to give you some points, it involves you apply an high power from terawatt to petawatt, ultra short which is of the femtoseconds laser pulse into a plasma that will create the plasma wave. This plasma can be created either by the laser pulse itself or it can be created by some other pulse. So some other pulse suppose the laser plasma when this plasma is created then you can inject it ultra short high power laser beam and that will generate an electron pulse beam and that which is responsible for having the gradients accelerating gradient now acceleration gradients of 100 gb per meter have already been achieved and they have been measured in the lab by injecting electrons properly or some of the electrons from the plasma itself they can be accelerated these electrons can be accelerated to very high energies let me just tell you what is the status of this at this moment high energy accelerators for example the, I will take examples of two accelerators one is Tevatron at Fermilab and that Tevatron is uh, a colliding ring where one TeV protons interacts with another one TeV antiproton and the, these collisions are studied. This antiproton is denoted by like this. So this is P into P bar this is a p and anti proton proton anti proton collisions another accelerator is a large hadron collider or uh, more popularly known as lsc where 7 tv beam collides or interacts with another 7 tv proton beam both of them are protons of course in this accelerator heavy ions also can be accelerated and they are accelerated to 7 TeV each. The circumference of this accelerator is about 27 kilometer. 
and these PP collisions take place. They have also planned a future circular collider that is called FCC at CERN for search of new particles and a study of uh, the interactions. Circumference of this new accelerator will be 100 km. Cost at this moment is esti estimated to be about 23 billion and superconducting magnets are used. So the energy is 100 TV in center of mass and that is the energy which is used in the collisions, nuclear reactions or particle. So 100 TV if you take, it is 10 power 5 GeV and the ultimate goal is to achieve 10 power 19 GeV where all forces are expected to unify. Unification of all the forces will is expected to take place at 10 power 19 GV. So ultimately the technologies and infrastructure has to be developed in such a way that ultimately we should be able to reach to 10 power 19 GV. Now coming back to laser plasma accelerator. These plasma based accelerators can support accelerating electric fields many order of magnitude higher than the conventional accelerators. The reason is you have seen I, as I said in the last slide here that in the RF superconducting accelerators you get let's say maximum 100 mv per meter while in the case of uh, laser plasma accelerators, you can get 100 G per meter. So that means it's 1000 times more. Now the, this restriction or the limitation in conventional devices come because of dielectric breakdown because of high fields. is not able to sustain that and therefore the dielectric breakdown takes place. Dielectric of uh, because we are using either cavities or waveguides and there when the field becomes very high, field ionization takes place and plasma will be formed and we will not be able to go to higher voltages or higher gradients. However, in laser plasma accelerators or any plasma accelerators, plasma is already broken down, therefore there is, is already plasma is there, so there is no such limitation. And therefore, there is no real, uh, real limitation on the accelerating gradient. The electric field Ez, which is a accelerating direction, Ez is a, supported by plasma, is proportional to the root is root of elect electron density. So this is the basic thing. So gradient is proportional to root n. N is the electron density electron density. The electric fields are created by a driving beam, driver beam and that driver beam could be either laser or it could be electron beam also or even the particle beams also. And that happens because of due to separation of charges. That means in the plasma you know macroscopically plasma is neutral. That means positive and negative particles are roughly equal and they are totally it is neutral. However, in this case, in laser plasma accelerators, there is a separation of electrons from the positive ions and that is what is responsible for generation of electric field. Now let us see that what are the type of uh, things possible. These electron plasma waves travel with a phase speed close to the speed of the drive beam. That means laser. A laser it moves almost at the velocity of light. And therefore when these electrons also move with that, high energy electrons can be accelerated. So 
if the plasma density is of of this order that means 10 power 19 per cc then it can support the field of about 300 gv per meter more than roughly 1000 times as i have just now explained it than the uh, more than 1000 times greater than the radio frequency per even with the superconducting structures now uh, i loudly think that uh, if suppose that you can get i do not know uh, i do not know whether it is possible how difficult it is the electron density of 10 to power 20 per cc then the field can be in tv per meter in this term so that means a tv energy you can get in one meter structure itself and that will be a fantastic thing but uh, there will be a lot of difficulties in getting this plasma density t of 10 to power 20 per cc so this basically when you get these kind of high energies what it translates it translates that the size of the accelerator will be reduced considerably see for example what was hundreds of meters will become only few meters and when the length of the accelerator reduces considerably then the cost also will come down because the building has to be very small infrastructure has to be very small. so cost also will reduce so these are two advantages then the size of the accelerator also comes down as a consequence of that the cost also cost reduction is there now to explain that how this works just a few remarks about how this laser plasma accelerators in laser plasma accelerators a short laser pulse of the order of femtosecond excites a wake of plasma oscillations and as a consequence of that the radiation pressure of this short intense laser beam pushes plasma electrons forward and aside separating electrons from the positively charged ions creating a positive positively charged column this also can be explained that there is a ponderbotic force which pushes electrons away from the axis and generates a charge separation between ions and in fact that this is what is responsible for this is where the uh, density of the electrons in plasma will come into picture of course there will be a restoring force also and that will initiate a local density oscillations this is demonstrated here in this figure which i have taken from this reference that at the center of this axis there are no electrons and since the positive ions they are much heavier almost 2000 times uh, heavier than electrons they move very slowly so there will be a separation of ions from the electrons so ions all the electrons will be generated uh, will be collected here or it will be all around so there will be a gradient accelerating gradient will be formed which could be of the order of 100 to 300 right now maybe at some stage it will increase and those uh, electrons if they match phase wise with the wave then they will be accelerated to very high energies so this is uh, i've already explained that uh, plasma accelerators use wake fields generated by plasma density electron plasma density waves so this is most important now what kind of things uh, when i'm talking about that 100 to 300 giga giga volt per meter what are the conditions involved in it so let's see as i explained earlier that the gradient ez is proportional to root of uh, electron density now suppose the density is 10 power 19 electrons per cc 
and you are able to separate 1% of this, then 1% means the density is of this order. And that will amount to an electric field of 0.3 GB per meter. However, if your system is such that you are able to have the density perturbation of almost 100%, that means there are no electrons in the center, then the gradients correspond to about this. And as I mentioned that if it goes to about 10 to 20 per cc, then you will get it into almost like TV per meter range. So most important of this, to summarize this whole thing, the most important of this whole process is generation of charge separation. That means you are separating electrons from the positive charge. So there is a separation of charge between ions and electrons. Now depending upon how this process takes place, the plasma accelerators are categorized into several categories and some of them are mentioned. So how this electron plasma wave is formed. So suppose this plasma wave is formed by electron plasma wave is formed by an electron bunch. Then those kind of accelerators are called plasma wave field acceleration. However, if that is done using a laser beam, so a laser beam or laser pulse in introduced from outside to form an electron plasma wave. Ultimately, it is the plasma wave which is responsible for acceleration of electrons. So if that is formed because of la uh, laser beam or laser pulse, then it is called laser wave field acceleration. Now it is also possible that we inject two laser beams and with different frequencies and then they interact and a beat wave is formed and that wave we also can give acceleration. That kind of accelerators or the acceleration is called laser beat wave acceleration. In this case, the electron plasma wave arises based on different frequency generation of two laser beams, two laser pulses. Here two lasers are required. Now there is another category which is uh, even more efficient. There the formation of an electron plasma beam. Effectively, electron plasma wave is required and that is achieved, formation of this is achieved by a laser pulse modulated by a stimulated Raman forward scattering instability and here the much higher gradients are possible and that kind of accelerators are called self-modulated laser wave field acceleration. So these are some of the categorization, these are some of the types of accelerators which are. Now the first laser plasma accelerator, this concept was given by Tajima and Dawson and in, that was published in Physical Review Letters here and it's a short paper but very good paper. And this was theoretical paper, theoretical concept was given by these two scientists. Later on, a system was built in the lab by Chandrasekhar Joshi and uh, colleagues and they accelerated the particles, electrons, using this laser plasma accelerator to high energies in the GeV per meter radiance. After that, several labs have started working and uh, for example, Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory, they have one GeV over 3.3 centimeter. That means it is a gradient is of the order of, so it's roughly 30, so gradient is of the order of 30 GeV per meter. 
Similarly, SLAC, the Stanford Laboratory uh, Linear Stanford Linear Accelerator Center, the injected 40 GV electrons into the laser plasma accelerators and they accelerated this to 82 GV adding 42 GV energy to the electron over a length of only about 85 centimeter. Now if this energy had to be achieved in slack itself it will correspond to about 65 meters. So you can say that is almost like 1000 times reduction in the length itself. So this is a uh, very good uh, technique and very good uh, excellent. Now the challenges which are involved here is improved performance of laser systems. And in this one, the laser beam quality, reliability and stability have to be improved. And perhaps the average power also, should, that means right now we were using only femtosecond pulse width. Maybe that is because of this, the average power is very small. So average power also has to be increased if you want to have higher acceleration. So these are some of the things which we have to improve and of course uh, this is, is very important. Right now people have developed terawatt or even petawatt lasers and they have been is thinking of uh, uh, developing even higher power accelerators. So you can see that there are various labs which are using terawatts. Some people have been developing petawatt and also now people have started talking about exawatt lasers. So once this is available, the gradients of much higher values will be available. Another thing which we have to develop is to develop the external injection because Right now, suppose when you are picking up some of the electrons which are there in the system and accelerating them, they, the current will be very small. So you should be able to develop an external injection system scheme to increase the energy of the electrons as well as quality of the beam also will improve further and the density will go up so higher currents can be achieved. If you are, uh, uh, if you can master the technique of external injection scheme. Then there is a, also thinking that if you want to do all this, is it possible to have a multi-stage of acceleration, not just one, but you can assemble. For example, in the RF accelerators, we have different cavities, they are, so, uh, a, particle accelerated by one system are further accelerated by another system. Like this there are several systems. So can we have can we have a multi-stage accelerations? And of course there will be a lot of technical difficulties, but one should think about it. So multi stages of acceleration to compensate for laser damping and electron dephasing in the plasma because phasing of match phase matching of these electrons uh, to the wakes will be extremely important for further acceleration of the beam so these are two things which we have to uh, we have to master and we have to improve it and uh, if that is done so three things will happen one is that we will be able to get higher energies Second thing is that we will be able to get much higher currents and then we will have a quality of the beam will also increase, uh, will improve further and these all these things so uh, we, we achieve then the this accelerators of good quality beams will be possible. So this is uh, uh, laser plasma accelerators. So these uh, plasma 
accelerators are showing the great promise and they were giving lot of importance by the best journals like uh, nature physical review letters and scientific american and you can see that uh, they published it on the front page now in india also we have started uh, working on in this field for example a system has been developed has been developed in the rr cat and uh, the diagram is shown here where a 10 terawatt 45 femtosecond pulse from the laser is uh, made to interact with the gas which forms the plasma and uh, a mono energetic uh, beam was accelerated was monetary energy beam was obtained you can see here on the the parameters of that uh, mono energetic beam are given here the electron energy was about 50 mbv energy spread of uh, about 5% beam divergence 4 milli rad and bunch charge was of the order of uh, 10 pico coulomb they have also further improved the system and uh, recently uh, some time back uh, the accelerated electron beam of up to 1 gv with a broad spectrum has been uh, obtained with a peak of uh, 500 mbv and here again a 10 terawatt uh, uh, laser with the 10 hertz was used so they have gone up to and the further improvements are uh, being done to increase the energy and to make it a very sharp peak this has been taken from this uh, uh, invited talk by anand murthy from rr cat there is another system developed at tata institute of fundamental research mumbai and they have developed a laser plasma accelerator system to get high energy multiple charge state ion beams and then converted them into a neutral beam for their studies and uh, some typical results is the they, they showed that uh, is a neutral argon beam of uh, mbv energy with intense laser has been the uh, uh, accelerated and this is shown here and they were interested in the studying the neutral beams and that is why first they accelerated to high energy and then they convert into uh, neutral beams so these are two accelerators which have been uh, developed in india and used uh, and now i will be talking about the second part